Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us here today at Ativo Networks. I've got uh, an interesting guest sitting next to me. So, uh, Chris Roberts, our Chief Security Strategist, welcome. Thank you for joining us, Chris. Thank you, sir. Good to be here, actually. So, if you don't know Chris, he's a pretty well-known character. I'll, I'll put it that way. So, uh, but well known. Good way for, to put it. Yeah. It's a good way to put it. Well known for uh, not just the beard, but uh, some of the things that uh, he's been able to break in the past. Chris joined us. Uh, how long has it been now, Chris? About a year and people? a half or so. Yeah, because I came on board uh, as an advisor for like six months and came and hang out with you guys for six months and then came on board, yeah, officially about a year and a half, just over a year and a half, just before a year and a half ago. So what was the pull? What, what brew, drew you to uh, Ativo Networks and cyber deception? So I think the big thing, I mean, the deception stuff is, is obviously, if you look at the logical step of where we're going from, you know, the defensive side, the offensive side, and trying to blend the two together, I think deception is definitely one of those areas that makes a difference. I mean, we, we take a look at everything else that's in the marketplace these days, and you go to them and say, okay, well, you know, you've got IDS, IPS, DLP, spywalls, and all these other things that are there in a very reactive mode. And you take a look at, okay, how do we put, how do we put the control back in the hands of the blue team? How do we actually help the adversaries really confuse the heck out of them and try to do things like that? So that, to me, is where the deception stuff comes in. Um, and then you flip it and go look at basically where uh, TiVo is, and you look at the marketplace, and you look at actually who's doing well in the marketplace, and primarily who's got the technical knowledge to execute effectively, and, you know, that's why I'm where I am. Oh, very interesting. You know, one of the challenges we see is, as you know, deception is rolled out in secret. So yeah. most organizations don't talk about it yeah. at all. So how do, you, how do you feel about that? And do you think that there's a method that we could deploy to get people to talk about it more? Because do you think it's impactful if somebody knows that deception is in place? You know, it's interesting. I mean, there's a double-edged sword on that one. It really is. Because on one hand, you... you it's like a minefield. I mean, if, if you get back to the military analogy, yeah. you and I have jumped out of airplanes and done crazy things for a living. If you know you are coming across a minefield, it automatically slows you down. You have to approach it with different tactics, different techniques, different procedures. It slows you down. Your tools and your tooling, you don't necessarily know if you can trust until you start to understand what you're tripping up against. And by the time you've tripped up it, you already told the adversary that you're already there. So there's that one side to go, so okay. that's a good piece. Yeah, oh yeah, oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, to be able to do that's fantastic. We've not been able to do that to this point, which is really nice. Now you flip it around, and that's why we have minefield signs everywhere, to, to keep people away. Yeah. Flip it around on the other side, and if you want to learn what somebody's doing, you want to understand their tactics, which, let's face it, is a very, very small section of, of the community, the enterprise community and everybody else out there. You almost want to sing it from the hills and go, hey, look, we're not just going to put firewalls in front of you. We've got some good stuff out here. So it's really interesting, you know, and, and we hope that people will start talking about this more because yeah. we know, you know, that uh, NIST is incorporated into their guidelines. Yep. MITRE is now recommending that uh, deception is used by Department of Defense and Defense Industrial Base, all their systems. Totally, yeah. EMA shows a 91% reduction time in uh, uh, dwell time. Yeah. 91% reduction, so which is fantastic. You know, so there's lots of discussion around it, and yet still you don't see, you know, any CISO sitting on a stage saying, you know, wow, I caught this and this and this with deception. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I, I think that's, so there's probably a couple of things, um, and I think you're right. You're still, we're still on this. We were almost, we're still on the fact that organizations want to try to keep it in somewhat stealth mode, and they want to use it. It's almost that. I mean, if you think about it, we approach the market with, you will get breached. We're upfront and honest about it. Yeah. Um, and I think very it's a true. very, very different way of approaching it. So many of the organizations here are, we can protect and we can defend and we can keep you out. And we're not. We, I mean, I'm on stage, you're up on stage. And I'm like, we're always going to get in. Yeah. There's nothing you can do to stop us from getting in. And that's, that's tough for people to swallow and for people to accept. So when you have a CISO up on stage, automatically they, it, it, to some degree, they have to accept the fact that everything that they've just bought and purchased isn't actually going to work to keep people out. Now it's going to reduce the risks. I mean, that's another conversation that we have definitely is how do we reduce the risks and, to your point, reduce the dwell time when somebody is discovered, bring that time down. But um, I think it's, it's tough for people to accept the fact that they have to admit that somebody's going to be able to walk in the front door. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. It's a, it's a different angle, and I, I'm, 
I know that we're starting to see a little bit more discussion publicly from yeah. users of deception. Yeah. You know, and, and there's been some good surveys on it. However, we still don't see people, you know, doing articles where they're interviewing someone that's running deception and talking about what they caught. So I think there's still some some thoughts, you know, that uh, it, it may lower the value of deception, which is, you know, really not true. No, I mean, again, to me, it's almost the emphasis of that, because as an adversary and as an attacker, if I know that deception is deployed, I'm going to, I can't walk in the same way I've been able to do it for the last 20 or 30 years. I have to slow down. I have to be heck of a lot more cautious. And even if somebody goes, hey, we know that Ativo is deception here, they're not going to be able to walk in with the same playbook. I mean, I think that's the wonderful thing about deception, and especially the way that we've architected it, is very much a case of if you walk in a company A and find an issue, you won't walk in a company B and see the same thing. It's so dynamic on how we've actually been able to build it and deploy it. No two organizations are going to look the same, which is really, really nice. So it's, it's really fascinating. You know, when you look at what Deception provides today, a new fabric of detection. Yeah. You know, and, and cutting dwell time, you know, really uh, sometimes eliminating breakout time where they can't move laterally. Yeah. They're caught right away. Yeah. Uh, so we recently rolled out AD Secure. Yep. You know, uh, I like to say, you know, when you look at Active Directory, it's almost like the GPS for an enterprise. Yeah. You know, what applications, what's there and stuff. And yet there's very few tools around Active Directory. In your past history, so we'll touch on Active Directory in a second, but in your past history, using Active Directory, has that been an important piece for you as you're trying to penetrate a network? Oh, my gosh, yeah. I mean, if you think about it, it literally is like picking up, you know, you and I are old school, picking up the yellow pages of the company. Yeah. I mean, it really is. I mean, if, if you're able, we normally are, you walk in and day one by lunchtime, you've, you own Active Directory. Yeah. You have everything. You have the users, the people, their technology, their systems, the networks, the design, Let the Let me build a bunch of beachheads, right? Oh, my God. Why? I mean, you, you, you've just been handed the yeah. country at that point. It's not even a beachhead. You just walked in and somebody just went, here's the country, have a nice day, and just <laughs> wandered off into the background. <laughs> I mean, that's how important Active Directory is. And to your point, up to this point, nobody's really successfully tackled how to defend Active Directory successfully because it's a dichotomy. It has to be open enough for machines to use it, for people to use it, for authentication to use it. But because it has to be that open, we've also got to figure out how to protect it. And to your point, I mean, the AD Secure stuff that we have is, I mean, it's mean and nasty, and I love it. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> yes! So well, let, let me ask you a question on that. Uh, for, the, for our viewers that don't know, AD Secure is really a technology that allows us, without touching domain controllers, yeah. to provide uh, deceptive results back to a compromised endpoint when the adversary is doing a query for Active Directory. Right. How important is that, do you think, where you suddenly, as a defender, have control, if you're sitting in your, your blue team seat, you suddenly have control over you know, what the adversary sees coming back from Active Directory. Uh, it's hugely important. Uh, that puts the symmetry right back into the blue team's hands. Because, I mean, again, same thing, you know, typically in a breach situation or an adversarial situation, the first time, unfortunately, the most blue teamers see or hear anything about it is unfortunately when it's turned up on, like, the threat yeah. intel report because it got posted up on, you know, an external website. The fact that, you know, you can now have alerting and detection capabilities as soon as I've compromised the first computer, I don't have to query for results. I don't have to go and ha break anything. I don't have to... All I'm simply doing as an adversary is asking, can I please have these credentials? So I'm not attacking, I'm asking. And the nice thing about AD Secure is it recognizes the fact that I'm asking for those credentials, hands me back something that looks, feels, sniffs, and smells exactly how it should, but it isn't. I mean, that's wonderful because now I can't trust the very tools I'm using to attack. It's, it's really interesting because it changes the structure of a defensive posture. So yeah. now we can truly say you may have a patient zero in yep. your network. Oh, yeah. But the, uh, the impact of the breach has been mitigated because you immediately know and you can start your containment then. Yeah. You're not waiting 50, 70, 100 days. You're starting containment right away. And they may never get to the resources they wanted to get to to actually extricate whatever data, uh, exfiltrate whatever data they wanted to exfiltrate. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, you and I both know the statistics on this one. I mean, you've got two different types of adversaries. You've got the ones that are in, break the glass, get everything they need, and outside inside 12 hours or some. But you have the other ones. I mean, average, average, depends on which statistics you want to look at, 197 plus days. Yeah. I'm in that environment creeping around and nothing's finding me. So, I mean, it's a huge shift when, you, when you're able to look at that and go, look, as soon as somebody's broken the glass, we're going to know. Or as soon as somebody starts to try to do a whole bunch of different things, we're going to know. You 
cut that time. And then the second part of it is, not only have you cut the dwell time down, but now when we know that something's in there, the ability to rapidly remediate and not have to chase our tails around the place to actually figure out where I started in the first place. I mean, that's huge. So we're almost out of time, Chris. Yep. Are you having fun? I am. Yeah, I am. From a technology standpoint, I think what we have is absolutely fantastic. I think it really, really is good from a tech standpoint. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us here. Thank you, sir. Thank you to our viewers. So, And uh, we hope you will take a look at ativonetworks.com. That's A-T-T-I-V-O networks.com. Thank you. Cool. Thank you, sir.